But Emma, I can hear you saying, haven't you seen this movie about a hundred times? Don't you own it on DVD? Didn't you go see it in the theater? Twice. Isn't it on Netflix? So why are you paying money to go see it again in another theater? Plus the price of a train ticket? Gay, what do you want from me? Sup spooks, it's December, which means it's Christmas time, which more importantly means it's Carol time. Today I'm meeting a friend in Manhattan and we're gonna go see Carol at the Metrograph, which means um, I don't have a lot of time because I have a train to catch, so I'm gonna try and make this quick. What I'm doing today is a Carol aired makeup look and I've been <laughs> trying to do this for months. Let's do it. So to start off, I've already done my foundation, concealer, primer, and my brows. Just, you know, do whatever you usually do for your skin tone. Um, set it with powder. I've concealed all my flaws because this is the 50s and women can't be complex individuals. I'm gonna take some of this blush. You want like a nice corally, it's like peachy-ish. You're gonna put it on the apples of your cheeks and then take it onto your cheekbone. Do the other side. This is NYX blush in the shade the Hamptons you can always add more this is a very like natural color at least on me and we're gonna take it up a little bit <sighs> on both sides take it up a little bit kind of where you would put bronzer it so this is a combination of makeup that I've observed in the movie and what I know about historical makeup because I watch a lot of old movies um and i work in a fashion museum so you can trust me also i've watched like countless tutorials for this just a little bit on the chin a little bit on the temples so even though carol takes place in the 50s it's the early 50s so a lot of style would be left over from the late 40s makeup was pretty natural then I mean, besides, like, bright red lipstick for victory. You know, 40s, more time, not a whole lot of makeup going on post-war. We're not really in the economic boom till a little bit after, so it's pretty subdued in the beginning of Carol in 1952. I've applied a shit ton of blush. It's a natural look. So blush was applied in multiple areas of the face, and it was to get, like, a healthy glow. I'm gonna look in my mirror in a minute and find out that I look ridiculous, but we're gonna keep going because I don't have time. <laughs> Put a little too much up there. Looks okay with my... $12 clip on ring white from Amazon, but uh, it's a bit much. Okay, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. We're going with it. We're going with it. That's it for face powders. Uh, I don't, I'm pretty sure they didn't use contouring in the 40s and 50s. Carol, I mean, they probably contoured Kate Blanchett because her cheekbones, but I don't feel like doing it. And it's not historically accurate, so just don't do it. The eyes. So I've already done my brows. I've actually plucked them, well, not this one, I look kind of the same. I plucked this one a little bit thinner to even them out, but also Carol's brows are pretty thin and just... The palette I'm using is Mighty Mattes by W7. I've never heard of this brand. The palette was like five bucks at Marshalls. So what you need is matte neutral eyeshadows. So I'm gonna start off with this like taupey... It, you want a color that matches your skin kind of because it's just very plain base um, and we're just gonna apply this on the lid just a very neutral plain light base just on the bottom part of the lid that's all we're doing on the lid nothing crazy 40s eye makeup they didn't do bright bold colors 50s eye makeup when they did was kind of later 50s towards the 60s it's kind of, you can't really define the style of a decade until you're at least halfway through. So this is kind of more 40s inspired because it's so early in the 50s. Um, so we're going to take, I found an interview with the makeup artist from Carol and she said she used this Laura Mercier eyeshadow called Blue Suede and it's a very blue looking color but if you watch, if you watch the movie Carol and you look at Kate Blanchett, it doesn't look like she's got blue eyeshadow on so I don't know. I'm going to be using this uh, brownish gray. Just we're gonna take that and put it into the crease. Um, not super heavy. We're just gonna try and create a little bit of a shadow, just to define the eye socket just a little bit. You know, always do a little bit of a time. Bleh. A little bit at a time because you can always add more but you can't really take it away 
unless you have makeup wipes, which I don't. I am out of makeup wipes and I don't want to start over. So a little out of time. <laughs> and don't worry about that harsh line at the top because we're going to do some blending in a second. Also, I'm using my equal tools brush. I have a bunch of BH cosmetics brushes, but I haven't cleaned them and I did some crazy neon color eye makeup. So I figured it'd be best not to risk that because um, I have like pink on them and that's not the look we're going for. Taking the gray into the crease of the other eye. We've got our gray in the crease. Now I'm gonna keep using this fluffy-ish brush. I'm gonna take that same color from before, the taupey. I don't even know, what, what is taupe? I don't know what taupe is. I'm gonna take that base color we used and we're gonna just blend that top edge out. It's all good. You can even like just go straight over it a little bit because we don't want this to look severe at all and you can always add a little bit more shadow back in if you need to just blending that out see how much softer it looks now that's pretty much it for eyeshadow okay so eyeliner for this period would be they they, they, they wear eyeliner they wore eyeliner in the 40s and 50s um, I personally don't like to wear eyeliner because I have a hooded lid so I feel like it just negates everything I just put on the lid but I am gonna try and do a little like very thin do I even want to uh, yes I do okay <laughs> I struggle I'm gonna use an angled brush I just walked into my eyes van because my room has a low ceiling and I'm very tall eyeliner <laughs> they're saying I'm gonna take this angled brush and this I can't see this black <laughs> black eyeshadow just to make the make it less powdery and a little bit more workable I'm just gonna add a tiny drop of saline you can use water but I don't know my cousin's a makeup artist and she always uses saline so I use saline I, there's probably something to that something about sanitation oh I only wanted a little drop, but I got a big drop, and sometimes that's just how life is. This is more accurate to how eyeliner was 40s and 50s. They didn't have tart, so fine, whatever this eyeliner is. I got it as a free gift with something else, and I, I don't wear eyeliner that much. <laughs> eyeliner. Huh. I'm very bad at this. Let's see how it goes. It's for Carol. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to start on the inner corner. Ugh. Oh, eyeliner freaks me out, man. Oh, yeah, you want to make it a little bit of a paste, and we're just going to go for a nice thin line. Oh, my God. Eyeliner terrifies me. Like, I have so much respect for people who <laughs> wear it every day, and they always have it sharp, but I can't do that. Okay. Maybe this is going well. This is fine. Uh, knock on wood. Okay. 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 It's just very thin. I'm not gonna wing it because whenever I do wings, even if it's like waterproof, it just, it starts to drag. I'm a very sweaty girl, so I don't like to tempt fate. It's a thin line, but it's there. And it helps to defy in the eye or something. What is eyeliner supposed to do? I gotta go. The non-dominant eyes, nobody stuck quite, let's, there we go, okay. That is even enough for me. <coughs> I'm not getting sick, I'm not getting sick, I'm not getting sick. <sighs> Got our thin eyeliner, I'm not doing a wing. Uh, Therese has a little bit of a wing in her eyeliner by the end when she's like glowed up. But I, I can't even tell that Carol's wearing eyeliner, so I'm gonna go with she doesn't have a wing. Eyes, oh yes, to finish off, where's my eyelash curler? This is an Ulta Beauty, not sponsored, but please sponsor me. Ulta Beauty Maximum Lashes Defining and Lengthening Mascara. My mom got it in a free gift when she got a certain amount of points on her Ulta card, and I took it, and uh, I, I love it. It's like great. I had to buy a new one because mine got a little crusty because it was you're supposed to replace your mascara every three months don't risk getting bacteria in your eyes kids also this was open when i got it i didn't realize until i got it home the seal was broken so i'm tempting fate don't be like me check the seals on your products before you pay for them you know what else terrifies me eyelash curlers actually 
I always have this fear that it's gonna like <laughs> rip my entire eyelid off. Okay, now that that version of hell is over, we're gonna finish off with this and then we're moving on to the lips. Oh, the lips. Like, yeah, <laughs> I love this mascara so much. Ulta, please sponsor me. I spend so much money at your store. Sponsor me. And the other side. <laughs> I don't have makeup wipes, as I've said, so I'm gonna let that dry and then wipe it off and hope it doesn't leave a streak. Oh my god. Oh god, why? Alright, I'm not gonna put anything on the under eye, just because I get really smudgy, but also, like, I'm, I just, I'm not gonna. Doesn't seem like Carol might, I don't know. <sighs> So that's the eyes. Oh my god. I can't. Let me just powder my sins away. Yeah, that's gonna have to do. We are done with all the powder makeup. All that's left is the lip, so it's like. I have a fan for after I use my setting spray so it sets faster. Just like completely douse your face and that's what the fans for. The setting spray I'm using is Ulta Beauty Matte Makeup Setting Spray and it has a nice cucumber melon scent to it. It's very refreshing and it keeps my makeup in place, especially my stage makeup. Oh boy am I sweaty under stage lights and my face doesn't move, which is great because I had, um, had another setting spray and then someone stole it in the dressing room and wouldn't fess up. And those dressing rooms get locked, so I know it was a cast member. <sighs> but then I got this one, and I uh, don't regret it. It was clearly fate. I... The lips. The lips. The lips. The lips. Carol's most signature thing is her, like, lipstick, and it matches her nails. Hint, hint, what color we're gonna be doing. I have now purchased a total of six lipsticks to try and find the perfect shade. The best match I have found so far, you can see it with my nails is NYX Pin Up Pout in the color Fiery. If you can't get this exact lipstick, that's what it looks like, it's a very poppy red. What you're going for is a coral color. Now that's tricky because coral can range from like straight up pink to straight up orange. Like this is one of the first lipsticks I bought. It, it seemed like it was a sign from the ghost of Patricia Highsmith because this is like a coral color and in the store with nothing to compare it to. I was like, oh, it's the perfect color. Picked it up, looked at it. Well, it doesn't say it on here. Um, this color for some reason has two names. So the color it says on the package is Lollies. It's the NYX butter lipstick. But on the display, it said Easy Living. And I was like, oh, that's a sign, but it was too light. And I also <laughs> tried Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit in Flame of the Game, but that's like Cheeto Orange. And I've got a whole host of other colors. NYX Pin Up Pout Fiery is what we're going for. So it's a coral, but it's more of a red orange than a pink orange. That's what you're going for. This is a very poppy color. My nail polish that matches is OPI. It's either Can't Stop Me Now or No Stopping my Me Now. I don't know, it was on clearance. I was gonna get a Sally Hansen one, but then I saw that this one was like five bucks cheaper. And it matches, so it's fine. I love this color so much. Why am I so pale? I ask myself this all the time. When you first put it on, it seems like super bright and very orange. Um, but look how well it matches the nails, my god. And it's not too like of a too much of a yellow orangey red, so it doesn't like make my teeth look totally yellow. So normally I do very deep blue reds, which makes my make my teeth look very white, and I was worried that this would make them look yellow, but not so much. Also, I only discovered this because I dropped it and I thought I broke it, but the NYX Pin Up Pout comes with a little tiny pot of, like, if you want to use it with a brush for, like, lip liner or just, like, to touch up, they have a little tiny pot of it in the, in the lid. It just pops out. How neat is that? It looks very bright, but then once you blot it, it's not. My entire box of tissues just fell in the garbage. There's, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a bit lighter now and it's very 
Carol. Carol aired. <sighs> I'm psycho, you guys know that at this point. And because I'm just paranoid that it looks like neon, what I do to soften it a little bit is I put another, like a little bit of another lipstick I just blotted on. <sighs> this is, what brand is this? This is a Maybelline lipstick in the color 215 Totally Toffee. And it's like, it's like a brownish nude, but I don't use a whole lot of it, just a little bit. And then it just kind of like softens the color, like tones it down a little bit. So just... So, I don't know if it has a visible difference on camera, but I notice a difference in real life. So, that's what matters. Now I have to scramble to get dressed and do my hair, because this girl's going to miss her train. I call this hairstyle, I don't have time. So this is my finished Carol look. I hate myself. I don't hate myself every time I do something dumb. I hate myself a little bit more. You know what I mean? Okay. So, I'm gonna go spend a ridiculous amount of money in Manhattan. I got paid $300 the other day for my first paid acting gig. I was the patient in an instructional video for a hospital research study. And I got paid $300 and a good hundred of it is already gone because that's life. So, stay spooky, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you sometime.